Food Safety Council or a conference in China in July of 2014. And the reason they held it is between 2012 and 2014, they saw a 59% increase in cancer rates. And whenever grain comes in from the U.S., Argentina, or Brazil, Herbicide residue, fungicide residue, and hexane that are showing up in their food supply. Now they've got 1.4 billion people, and if they have a lot of sick people or autistic children, which is growing dramatically, they just cannot afford it. Bob, can I ask you to stand over here? Sure. Mind? We'll get better sun with the okay. live. Right here would be perfect. Right there. You may have to move if I'm going to stand here to. So, as long as you can see it. I'm good. Yeah. So, they know if they can't have that continued increase, they can't afford it as we can here. Now, will it make a difference? Uh, China is a different country. I got home and my, my wife asked, are you ready to go back? I thought a little bit and I said, no, nah, I don't think so. Why? Uh, I'm not that big on eating uh, cooked cabbage. The beds were as hard as the floor here. Everything was foreign. If you ate food, uh, and it was a chicken dish, they cut up the chicken and they leave the bone fragments in the food. So, and pollution was terrible. But uh, the top seven generals in the Chinese army were in the front row of the audience. And that's the biggest uh, market for uh, our soybeans in the world. They basically import 67% of the exported soybeans in the world, and roughly 50 to 55 percent of the U.S. soybeans end up in China, feeding people there. And there will be some major changes in uh, their uh, consumption and uh, soybean supply. Anyhow, we think the message about healthy food is getting home. The sex Successful Farming magazine is published by Meredith Publishing in Des Moines, Iowa. And they ran a mid-February issue 2016 that was entitled Farmers Meet Your New Boss. And it was a 12 or nine segment, 12 page story. I can send copies to people. But in there they said the millennial shopper that's 30 to 35 years old or maybe 30 to 40, they want healthy food, they want happy families, they want good nutrition in their food. And uh, they said, Farmers, even if you don't like the message, recognize that these shoppers will make up, uh, say, 70% of the shopping public in about 10 years. So you better adapt. And we went and talked to the head editor, Dave Kearns, a few days after they showed up, and we thanked him for writing it. And we asked, are you expecting any negative feedback? He said, yes, we're going to the big uh, A show here, uh, Commodity Classic. And we're expecting people to come up, and my, we've already prepared our answer. And that is, we publish 34 magazines in different languages, and we also publish like Ladies Home Journal and uh, quite a few women's magazines. And they knew that uh, roughly 100 million women a month read their magazine. And they said, we like producing the best, producing, circulating in different countries the best farm magazine possible. We also do the same for women's magazines. We did our survey. We know what the five top hot, hot buttons are for women, and it's healthy food, happy families, good nutrition. So if any of the egg producers or egg people disagree with us, we'll let them argue with 100 million mad women. <laughs> so uh, I like, uh, part of what I'm here for is to share this news and then also interact with people and hopefully learn about some markets where we can connect some Midwest producers to uh, maybe consumers out here. I'm involved in a big food project that we may move on to different countries, but 30 miles north of me in central Iowa will be the biggest fish farm in the nation by this fall. And within five years after five planned expansions, it will be the biggest in the world. They're raising barramundi, which are Australian sea bass, so they went after the higher dollar, eight dollar pound fish market to the two dollar pound tilapia market, which is a bottom feeding fish. Anyhow, uh, nutrient uptake by 200 bushel corn, which is kind of the standard soybeans, is listed here. 
And basically, the number one used herbicide, which is from a company in St. Louis, uh, chelates all of these. They're all listed there. Uh, Richard Olry is speaking quite a bit today. He's a good friend, and uh, he likes to work with PubMed. And he looked at those minerals, and he figured out what percent of the genes that are in the human construct involve those minerals. He said roughly 59% of them. And that's why we're seeing a lot of the diseases in there, and I'll get heavier into that. Uh, Bob, I need you to stay in between those two lines, or else you're not on screen for the live. People are actually following this live. Okay. Right there is fine. We'll do that. <laughs> now, people are asking, is it the application of the herbicide, or is it the insertion of the gene that's causing the problem? And uh, basically at universities, uh, no one gets a grant to do this work or these studies unless they have permission from the seed companies. They're not going to do that. The two people that have done it is Ishmael Katmak at Purdue and then Luis Zobioli out of uh, Meringue, Brazil, when he was studying with Bob Kramer at University of Missouri. But they looked just at the insertion of the trait and they found pretty significant decrease in those minerals in the plant. <coughs> And the thing is, most of those minerals are those uh, manganese, boron, copper, and zinc. If the plants are missing them, they're going to be very prone to disease attack and dying from uh, fungal disease, probably a root disease. If humans are deficient in those minerals, they're also going to get sick and very likely end up with Alzheimer's. Okay, there's Rich's slide. Uh, there is a chart that shows a correlation or the chelation quotient between uh, glyphosate product and the different minerals. And uh, quite a few of them, the chart is available. What we urge farmers to do now, though, is take a closer look at their fertility programs. Number one, when they pull soil tests, we urge them that if they haven't been looking at those micronutrients, pay attention to it. Uh, part of the problem, and lack of decent nutrition to the plants and to the people is that most of these tests will detect if the mineral is there, but it won't detect if it's plant available or if it's being chelated by a stronger compound, which is the case. Okay, here's the work, uh, you know, I got that in there twice. You know, what we're seeing in probably 90% of the fields right now is a general, uh, instead of a dark green color, we got light green, dark green streaking. And there were uh, a lot of publications 20 years ago where they diagnosed it, and there was a chart called Be Your Own Corn Doctor. If you're showing this discoloration, it's shortage of sulfur or nitrogen. If you're showing this, it's zinc or another mineral. We don't see that as much anymore. And most farmers look at it, and their agronomists don't know about it. The universities aren't telling them what to look for, so the, the teachers aren't trained. But uh, if we see that, the plant is going to be much more drought prone, stress prone, subject to disease attack, and also uh, disease is more likely to show up, which was the case. Now, in North Central Iowa, I like flying. Uh, a friend of mine builds his own airplanes, and he wins the top prize for home built at Oshkosh, Wisconsin. So he's safe to fly with. But we're going over fields southwest of Fort Dodge, Iowa, and North Central early August of 2010, and all the corn underneath it should be dark green. It's not. It's brown. It's dead from a new disease brought on by lack of nutrition and bacteria that moved into the corn crop. And that happened to be the same bacteria, Clavibacter, that was used as the promoter when they did the first BT project. Anyhow, these are soybean fields. They should all be dark green. Instead, they were uh, attacked by a fusarium fungus, which is a root rot, again caused due to lack of nutrition. Everything should be dark green. Why these are significant is guess where the food supply is coming from oftentimes, from these diseased fields. Uh, two great uh, kind of case studies that were done <coughs> by lay people are written up in books. One is called Animal Farm, and that's P-H-A-R-M written by Mark Purdy, uh, who was an organic British dairy farmer that did not believe the official explanation of what was called mad cow disease, or BSE, which is caused by a biomatrix that we commonly call a prion. The other one is when you uh, chelate 
cobalt with a herbicide and it's not available, you will demyelinate your nerve sheath and you'll end up like a famous baseball player called Lou Gehrig. And uh, if you happen to go to a dentist and he's talking about giving you nitrous oxide, you may tell the dentist, I want to beat our cobalt test first because if you're exposed to nitrous oxide, it converts the valency of the cobalt from the plus one to the plus two or plus three valency, and it will not be body available. And as I mentioned to a few people, I played softball in Iowa Falls, and our good second baseman ended up being a superintendent in school after he got his doctorate, and he went in for a small dental procedure, and he never woke up from the anesthetic. And it may have been this as the root cause. So. Uh, if people are around different uh, products that chelate it, there are things you can do. In this case, we tell people if they're using Liberty herbicide to uh, take B12 supplements or get some lozenges or actually get a B12 shot. Core atom and B vitamins is cobalt. Uh, going a little bit further into that uh, investigation as far as why the 80% of the U.S. corn crop was dying early, uh, we ended up getting referred to a Dr. Chris Johnson, who was a head uh, researcher specializing in prions at the National Fish and Wildlife Research Group in Madison, Wisconsin. And I dropped some samples off with him, and they tested it, and they got a Koch's postulate, which is where you take a disease plant, isolate the organism, and test or treat another new plant, healthy plant, with it, and it comes down with the same disease then that's called fulfilling Koch's postulate. But uh, he wrote a, a good article on it, but he was censored and never got published. So what we've been working on and the full investigation has been, we've been working on since 2009 when the disease first showed up. And the full investigation has been going on since 1999. It still hasn't come to a full conclusion. But uh, there's a few good books to read. One uh, actually started out with Kurt Vonnegut Jr because he helped solve the riddle as far as something that is not living can replicate. And as his brother, as it turned out, he would discuss crystal work with his brother, who happened to be a crystal researcher at MIT. And they would talk about this at uh, Thanksgiving dinner and such. And he took the uh, talk about crystals replicating and put it in his book called Cat's Cradle. But uh, another good book, uh, Deadly Feast by, I think, Richard Rhodes, and it was a story about uh, a epidemiologist, medical doctor that was working with cannibals in New Guinea. And at the start of the story, they describe a feast where Granny is both a guest of honor and the main course. But they had a strange neurological disease show up called Kuru. So a fellow by the name of, uh, well, and then following that was, uh, uh, Mark Purdy, who was an organic British dairy farmer that didn't believe the official explanation, and he found out that the uh, mad cow was showing up when they had a deficiency in copper, an excess of manganese, and exposure to high levels of EM emission that was set off a cascade. But the uh, prions that were in their brain that are used to store long-term memories in normal humans are in the PRC form, but when they're exposed to the high levels of EM emission and the other factors, they convert to the infective PRPCS form. And the person that did the best work was probably a fellow named Stanley Prusner, who was a neurologist at University of California, San Francisco. He worked on it 20 to 25 years. It was his passion. Everyone says the dead end. He ended up winning the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 1997. Now, if these are in the food supply, if they're in the body, the way to get them out is by taking a mineral called clinoptilolite, C-L-I-N-O-P-T-I-L-O-L-I-T-E. And it is ground zeolite, which is used in an aquarium to take the nitrogen out of the water. It's a volcanic mineral. If they grind it at 1 to 3 nanometers in size at a 105-degree angle, then it's considered clinoptilolite. But... Uh, it's probably the number one cause for low birth rates in the U.S. because the prion considers the fetus as a nutritional rival. And how we found it is even a high percentage of young animals were being miscarried during the mid-stages of pregnancy. The aborted 
placental tissue ended up being full, filled with these little crystals. And the uh, diagnostic, our vet pathologist that did the staining and the autoclaving uh, ended up finding it in the feed source, which was a soybean meal at that time. But Harvard Medical is researching these as far as how they're connected to arteriosclerosis, hardening of the arteries, uh, arthritis, cataracts, and Alzheimer's. Anyhow, uh, I happened to go with Don Huber, the top ag scientist in the world, on a seven-day road trip. We took pictures in, a, in an industrial scanning electron microscope. I've got these pictures here at anywhere from 14,000 to 180,000 times magnification. And these are coming from corn and soybean tissue from the Midwest. Chinese found them right away in soybeans they imported from the U.S. They just grew the plants up from the seed, split the leaves open, put a scope uh, or a slide to catch the juice that flowed out of the leaves, and they found them. Uh, I mentioned, uh, as far as verification of this, uh, Dr. Claudio Soto at University of Texas Health Services wrote a big article, probably the best one on it, and they're staying in prisoners work. He's still alive. Uh, Harvard, or WashU in St. Louis has a true lab. They do the work there also, and a lot of faculty go between WashU and Harvard. And I've talked to a few of the people, and they're correlating it with 24 other human diseases. And if you don't have the 45 years experience as a vet pathologist, know how to stain it and do the autoclave work, you're never going to find these. You're never going to see these. Sam is still alive. Uh, he's actually born in Des Moines, Iowa, so I need to talk to him sometime. Now, point is when the seed company started doing all the genetic tinkering, they made a few bad assumptions, and that is the, they said they were reductionists. They said the presence of one gene controlled the expression of one trait. And what they know now is the genetic system. And uh, press, or one trait typically is controlled by the electromagnetic interaction between particles. So it's a lot more complicated than that. And also what they did know is that every human has two to five pounds of bacteria in their gut. And uh, those bacteria are responsible for extracting nutrients, controlling human health, and also make up roughly uh, 70% of the immune system in people. Okay, we can have basically all pesticides that they have an effect. Most herbicides by key, work by chelating minerals. But the history of pesticides basically starts in uh, Europe, pre-World War I, and the, the big company is called IG Farben. And Farben is a German word for colors, and they were making industrial dyes out of coal tar. Now, when the, after World War II, they had the Nuremberg trials, and basically IG Farben was split up into three companies, BASF, Bayer, and uh, Hirsch Works. So, and then in this country, we had uh, pyrethroids were developed by the British, and it's a from uh, chrysanthemum flowers. And then we, in this country, we had efforts at uh, Fort Detrick, and that's basically where we worked to counter the activity of the Russians that was detailed in a book called Biohazard. Anyhow, uh, ADHD is a major problem right now. What's the cause of it? And uh, what they know is basically insects nervous system is very similar to that of humans. So if we work with uh, colonesterase inhibitors or nerves in insects and people are exposed to that either as direct, say, drift or exposure through the food or air, they're very likely to have some of the same problems. And if you talk to any teachers at work with grade school kids, discipline is oftentimes their number one problem. As far as leaky gut and all of that, I was involved in this project. And I still have a 30-year-old T-shirt hanging in my ass one time, should she throw it away? I said, no, it's a gold mine. But what it was, we're trying to uh, create insect-resistant corn 
and they did it by taking a genetic sequence from uh, soil-dwelling bacteria called Bacillus thuringiensis, or Bt, and they were using Clavobacter bacteria to put it into corn. And anyhow, it was great because the number one problem raising corn in the Western Corn Belt is European corn borer that came from Europe. And supposedly up the Erie Canal and during World War I. But if that's happened, uh, they theorized that it would only be effective against insects that have an alkaline gut, not something with an acidic gut. But it looks like there are some of their assumptions were wrong because uh, if kids are having a problem with leaky gut, it's major problem, behavior problems, and then oftentimes it breaks the blood-brain barrier. So they have done a lot of uh, microtoming of different uh, gut cells. They know that uh, one type of food causes basically breakdown of the gut lining, uh, loss of integrity, loss of intactness, with and without, and uh, they have got the medical proof that there is an actual problem. It's not mental. Uh, we really needed uh, to explain this whole thing and to work with us over in China, present good evidence. We needed the help of two good human biochemists. We ended up getting help from a guy named Anthony Samsell, who I believe is up in New Hampshire. Not a rascally old guy, but very intelligent. He uh, started doing the work after he would, he's got some greenhouses that he works in as house. <coughs> And he would just pee into a bucket instead of going outside in the cold wind. He noticed uh, when he poured the bucket on the plants, it would kill them. So he thought, maybe I've got something in me I should check out. So he ended up forcing all of Monsanto's, getting and acquiring all of Monsanto's secret uh, research results through the Freedom of Information Act. Anyhow, he partnered up with Steph Seneff, who's a head biochemist at MIT. They've written six major review papers about 30 to 40 pages in length, very heavy reading. But if you read, you are going to be pretty much kind of an impartial expert on it. We're also seeing a lot of uh, different parts of the country where the price of combines has gotten quite expensive. They, if they have to hire in uh, combines to harvest their crop, they want to stay on schedule and they will spray their crop with glyphosate to desiccate it so it is all right, say, next Tuesday when the cutting crew gets here. And uh, uh, the systemic herbicide that late in the season will be sprayed on the leaves and it will be transported directly to the growing point, which at that point is the grain. So a lot of the people that think they have gluten intolerance actually might be very allergic are creating symptoms due to the glyphosate that is contained in there. So we really need a replacement for it, and uh, there's good progress coming on that. But read these papers. Uh, it's uh, Sam Cell and Santa for number one, two, three, four, five, and six, and they're already working on seven, eight, and nine. Again, Nancy Swanson basically <coughs> show the correlation between uh, Bt corn acres and colitis and Crohn's. Crohn's is a nasty disease that uh, if you have it, it's a lifetime uh, uh, affliction. I lost a sister to it. Uh, there are alternatives out there. There's a fellow named Bob Quinn, uh, farms out in Montana. He run, grows the ancient weeds that were selected for digestibility and flavor rather than being able to be processed quite easily. So he raises grains like Kamut and Spelt, grinds them and sells under the label uh, Bob's Red Mill. Mm -hmm. And those are alternatives. Uh, Seneff did uh, work on it, as have other people. And uh, there's a strong correlation between gut microbes and obesity. If you throw off the gut population and you move away from having lactobacillus, enterococcus, and biophididium as your major three bacteria and move towards uh, salmonella, E. coli, and clostridium, you'll have major problems. Uh, a lady by the name of Dergana Stanley teaches at Queensland University in Australia, and she has found out that if they do fecal transplants and include specific bacteria in the transplant, you can actually uh, cure autism and uh, diabetes. 
she's done the work. But when she writes, she always writes like she's doing it on poultry. And that way she disguises her results. <laughs> but uh, there is an obesity switch and it looks like that's being affected. Uh, you go to other parts of the world and the number of people grossly overweight uh, is down quite a bit. I guess I've been impressed with the shape of the people here. It looks like there's a lot of marathoners and such. But uh, you go to different parts of the world, Germany, Argentina, you can tell they're starting to drink a lot of uh, pop and consuming uh, high fructose corn syrup, which Hopkins found out doesn't get digested for usage, it gets stored as fat right away. Anyhow, it brings up the question, is Roundup in our food? And if you're eating a modern uh, drive-through diet or a uh, fast food diet, hamburger, cheeseburger with french fries, drink pop, there's quite a few different ways where the glyphosate can get into your system and it looks like it's involved in a uh, high percentage of the major diseases. They actually tested honey, uh, Zen honey cut with mothers across America, did one study, a friend of mine did another one. They looked at honey from Northwest Iowa. Again, uh, honey is made from nectar and pollen gathered from flowers. And if you got uh, pesticide drip landing on those flowers, it's picked up in the honey. So more places than you think. There was quite a bit of talk yesterday at the pre-beating about instruments that could be used to detect it. This device is uh, what's called an X-ray diffraction instrument from Bruker, which is a Massachusetts country. It's, it looks like a giant squirt gun, and uh, it does a cost on it. There's two tools that come with it together. It's about $63,000, and it was repurposed. Our Bruker requested that Dr. Joe Clapperton, who's the number one or two number uh, best sole microbiologist in the world, repurpose it. So she is using it, and she is putting food products in the tray, be it uh, a fruit, a vegetable, processed grain, an egg, or a peel off an orange. It will analyze for all 94 minerals in about 75 to 80 seconds, and it'll give you a total rundown on it. And part of the goal is to have these out there. It also picks up small molecules, which would include uh, pesticides, and pharmaceuticals, and I work quite a bit with Jill, and I ask that the number three library be built for mycotoxins, because more and more people are being exposed to bacteria or fungal mold, or is coming through the grain. We're seeing a major problem with, if our farmers have grain that basically uh, rots, and they can't feed it to their livestock, they will take it to an ethanol plant, and the ethanol plant will uh, basically concentrate the mycotoxins 3x. And then they try to sell it as DDGs to other livestock feeders. If they don't accept it, they try to get rid of it in animal food, pet food, and also human food. And we've got places where the dogs will not uh, get bred anymore in Iowa and major problem. In the humans, uh, exposure to some of them, the symptoms will range from uh, refusal of feed or to esophageal cancer. So major problems, also ADHD. Uh, what the $65,000 instrument will replace is probably one that runs $350,000 to $500,000. The state of the art is uh, the so-called LC-10 of MS. Uh, we're working on a scanner that we hoped would be out two years ago in June, um, designed and built by the Jet Propulsion Lab engineers. Price point was going to be $250, and a housewife could take it in, scan all of her food before she bought it for mineral content and pesticides. But uh, things kind of fell apart on that. Dan was involved, and Dan has visited with the uh, engineers on it. Very smart people. It's not completely dead, I found out this summer. One thing, if you've got relatives in Florida, let them know that they probably need to do something with their water. This is a slide uh, of data taken by a well water survey taken by the U.S. Geological Survey Group, which is in the Department of Interior, but is well water in central Florida, and 
everything in the pink area uh, is contaminated with the number one used herbicide, partly because the citrus growers have been using 20 gallons of Roundup per acre on some of their ground for 20 years now. How uh, much? Excuse me, 20 pounds. They're putting on four gallons five times a year. Four quarts five times a year. Now, I, I gasp at that figure. This shows the if you're irrigating corn with 28 inches of water, which is typical in their sandy soil, they calculated how much glyphosate would be pumped per acre or per square mile. And they've got some places 35 million pounds coming up. Just a huge number. And I've got a friend that has the only organic citrus grove in Florida. They're very proud of it. They sell it as Uncle Matt's. And uh, he was caught in a conundrum, and his news name would, or they found glyphosate in orange juice in Florida, which is not surprising at all. He tried to get a uh, permit to dig an irrigation well, and they would not give him one. They said, if you want water for your trees, we'll give you the wastewater from Orlando. <laughs> and I've got a friend that is an Oxford trained forensic medical pathologist. He did analysis on the water and it was 20, 40, 20 to 40 part per million glyphosate and it also contained a lot of pharmaceuticals. And that is why these trees are dying because Roundup works not by inhibiting the shikimate pathway but it works by tying up the minerals needed to have an immune system and fight off the root pathogens. So we've got food sources. This is what is allowed by EPA. And these levels and standards are not set by science. They're based on request by the herbicide companies. And they go in every so often, they raise them because they want to be within the standards that are allowed. Now, if you have the uh, Bessie the cow, you can have 400 part per million glyphosate in the hay that you're eating. Number one problem in cattle, sometimes in this country and in Europe, Germany especially, is botulism, chronic botulism. Because uh, you kill off the three beneficial ones, which I mentioned earlier, ones that thrive are E. coli, Salmonella, and Clostridium. Uh, there's effects out there. Beverage sources, uh, they tested German beer. I think they were all contaminated. And men had a much higher glyphosate level as tested by urine analysis because Germans drink more beer. And my favorite one, Warsteiner wheat, is on there, so I don't drink much anymore at all. Uh, so if you're a highbrow Californian, you might say, I don't drink beer, I drink wine. They tested uh, in St. Louis 14 different brands, some organic wines, and 90% of them were contaminated because uh, USDA rules allows organic crops to be fertilized with manures from cattle that then fed GMO grain. Anyhow, uh, this was a German study. They did uh, basically city dwellers that do not spray and it was coming through the food or the drink. Uh, fungicides, they're used more and more to fight these diseases. A good friend of mine is a top plant pathologist with the Argentinian USDA, and he works with a group called Jerkus, which is a Japanese USDA. And just to prove there were no fungicide residues in the grain, they finally tested some for the first time. Guess what they found? And they've got a real bad soybean disease in northern Argentina and all of Brazil called Asian rust. It's the worst disease, plant disease people have ever seen. If you see the plants beginning to turn yellow, uh, there's no way to save them. It will die. And we saw it one year, it wiped about, out about 15 million acres of soybeans. So it places the Jap Chinese uh, food supply in jeopardy. Anyhow, uh, North Carolina Medical School did a study. Doesn't all show up on this uh, slide. But anyhow, they, the second most common fungicides used are the strobiliarins. They came out of BASF as a uh, stabilized synthetic version of a strobilurus 
product that prevented other fungi from utilizing pine cones in the forest as a food source. But he uh, treated human nerve cells he had in a petri dish with these fungicides and he found severe neurological damage to the nerve cells. So he's theorizing that these are tied into uh, Huntington's disease, ALS, MS, what have you. So they need more studies yet. Uh, Lauren Pang is the health official, former WHO official on the island of Hawaii. Know him quite well. And anyhow, uh, where they've got some severe problems with pesticide exposure, say on Kauai, near a town called Waimea, uh, the companies have to show a list of what they were all spraying. And the reason that became a big problem is there were times they were spraying a OP insecticide, a neurological affecting herbicide uh, insecticide right next to the schools. And the winds will change from being 20 miles from the north one minute, five minutes later to 20 minutes from the south. And there are uh, adults that would have to go to school, take their kids right to the hospital to have them treated for an insecticide that the companies would not reveal they had been sprayed. And at night they'd go home and they'd take their parents to kidney dialysis because of all the dust that blew into their houses. And uh, they weren't able to get anything done, but what Lauren did is when they say EPA tests one herbicide, they only did run one test, that's all that's required. When you test two products, you have to test product A and product B and A times B. When you've got three, you do A, B, C, A times B, B times C plus A times C. So was that five or seven? Well, if you're exposed to 87 different things, probably simultaneously, that's one times 10 to the 23rd different cases or combinations you need to test, and they've only got, only got the money to do five. I mentioned chronic botulism, kind of a deadly disease uh, for cattle. If you ever hear about uh, 200 cattle all of a sudden being found dead on a farm, and it's not lightning, and it's not UFO, damage is probably chronic botulism because what it will do, the cattle will, will get gaunt, skeletal, the mouth will get paralyzed, and uh, they'll just drop over dead in the stanchion because the neurological toxin will get, or botulism toxin will get so high. Now when p ladies get a Botox injection, that's the same toxin. What the German scientists and medical people have discovered is most SIDS death Crib death are due to exposure to botulism. And a friend of mine was filling in for Don Huber when Don uh, was in the hospital, and he happened to be out in Maine and uh, was <clears throat> giving Don's lecture. And Don, a uh, dairy farmer, invited him out to come see his cattle, 200 or 150 dairy cows that the <clears throat> farmer is very proud of. And the old days, farmers would have all their cows named. That was herds of 20 or so. And anyhow, Don, uh, Michael watched them walk past, and the farmer asked, what do you think of my cattle? He said, you've got a really nice herd, you should be really proud. But you've got three or four that have a problem. The guy asked, what do you mean? He said, I noticed four are walking stiffly, like their joints are hurting them, and I watched them drink water by the fountain, and they're lapping the water up instead of drinking it. And he said, uh, what might happen, you come in the next two or three days, and they'll be dead in the stanchion. And the farmer asked, how do you know this? And Mike says, well, I kind of worked on that in my previous life, which is where that I talked about that uh, grinder. And, and then the farmer started crying, great big 200-pound uh, guy, six foot three. And usually farmers don't start crying like that. And Mike asked, what's the problem? He says, my grandson's in the hospital. They don't know what's wrong with him. And he, he's going downhill. And Mike says, call him up and request a botulism a, a test right away. And they did. It was positive, and they saved the kid. Wow. Anyhow, are we seeing it in Iowa? Yeah, major problem in dairy herds, California. I've seen it three times in Iowa, and it's where they're consuming uh, lights of glyphosate, which is screwing up the, the gut population. Chronic fatigue, also connected with it. Uh, in Germany, they counter it by taking a humate product, 
called Activa Men or Active Almond. In this country, there are different uh, humate sources. Uh, one that is commercialized and well researched is a product called Restore, which is developed by a uh, triple certified medical doctor, Zach Bush. It is sold in uh, GNC, I believe, and also Walmart for about $63 for a bottle that lasts about 96 days. I take it. I think everybody should. And I'm working with uh, another humate guy out in Idaho, and it'll be a powdered pill rather than a liquid. But what it does, it ties up the active ingredient in uh, cattle. They can also take sauerkraut juice because sauerkraut is fermented with the lactobacillus bacteria. I'm sorry, so what does that do exactly? It, uh, the lact, uh, if you're trying to get the gut healthy again, the number one thing is take, get rid of the uh, herbicide that diet that is dirty, and then try to reestablish the gut population. The number one bacteria beneficial one being lactobacillus. And sauerkraut juice, or sauerkraut in general, contains, is fermented using lactobacillus bacteria that floats into the sauerkraut from the air. So, so, what was the supplement What was the, the name of the supplement you were just talking about? Activamin or Activomin. It's sold over the counter in Germany. A friend of mine that lives along the Mississippi River, his level was 13 part per billion in his urine. And anyhow, he is German. He went over there, brought the product back. It's a humate pill. Humate is basically the shaving off the top of a coal bed which is made of old plant parts, high in carbon. But you've got a lot of binding sites in it. Under a microscope, it looks like a honeycomb, and it ties up the, the toxin, and then you crap it out. You said the product was Restore? The restore. It's a liquid product, and uh, well-researched by the NIH medical community. And if you look up, uh, do a YouTube, uh, either Jeffrey Smith or Dr. Mercola interviewing Zach Bush. Uh, Zach Bush, I've got to admit, uh, he was on the Patrick Gitempo's uh, GMO Revealed uh, web series, and they describe him as probably the best educated, best well-spoken young physician they've run across, and I would tend to concur. Except he gets about three things wrong, but well worth watching. And what he's done uh, is he made the excellent connection between healthy soul and healthy people. Uh, this was uh, Stephanie and uh, Anthony's first uh, talk. Uh, the, when we were in China, one of the presenters was a lady by the name of Rowena Mercola. And we had heard about a study where they fed GM food to lab animals by the end of the second or third generation, they're all sterile. We heard it was done in Russia, and we thought, oh, probably done in a bathtub or an old car radiator. <laughs> well, she happens to be head of the Neural uh, Human Behavior and Neural Bioscience Institute. Very good scientist. There's quite a few good scientists in Russia. And she did not believe the results when she did it. And usually you don't look at rats and think those poor little rats. But she, uh, she didn't believe the results, so she had the study repeated nine times, and results were the same every single time. And uh, I don't know Vladimir Putin in person. A friend of mine has met with him several times. But uh, when the Fed said no more GM food in their country, uh, they view modified food as a germ warfare weapon. As do the Chinese. Wasn't that study also telling that uh, the rats were growing hairs on their tongues? Yes, which sounded gross. But yeah, the loss of fecundity was showing up and repeated nine times. And uh, uh, one medical conference I was at was called the Environmental Health Medical uh, Conference. They're having one in, I think, Scottsdale, Arizona in April. And anyhow, it's the doctors that you go to when the male clinic has says, I've got nothing I can do for you. I just go home and prepare to die. And what these doctors do, uh, every community, I think, should have a doctor trained in this because without it, uh, I'll tell about uh, toxic Tina later.
but the learning objective is uh, what they are teaching people that were just getting introduced to environmental medicine is if you have a patient come out, do about a five-step survey and say, uh, let's see, five-step survey. First of all, look and see what heavy metals they've been exposed to in any previous work or uh, hobby, heavy metals, what have you. Number two, look and see what uh, maybe uh, bacterial, fungal, mycotoxins they may have, may have been exposed to. Number three, uh, look and see what industrial compounds such as in paint, in wallboard, in carpet they have been exposed to. Then look and see uh, what pesticides may be coming through the food or the water. And then lastly, look at maybe EM emission. High levels of electrical circuitry or gausses come in from electronic equipment. A lot of work on cell phones has, and Wi-Fi has been done in the Netherlands and Israel. They do not have been worldwide conferences on that topic. A friend of mine whose wife was on six star Sunday morning CBS a few years ago when they were researching it. Caught the start of it before running out and doing some work. And I said, that's what Bert's wife has. And she is a processing engineer that taught at a university, but she could no longer tolerate cell phone tower signals. And she can't take the signal from uh, US Cellular. Her sister cannot tolerate the signals from Verizon. And anyhow, they had her living in a metal travel trailer inside a machine shed, and that still wasn't enough, so she would get physically ill. They finally sold some ground, and they bought a house in West Virginia where they got a big radio uh, telescope to listen for signals from outer space. And uh, that whole valley where people can't have cell phones and can't have Wi-Fi, and the whole uh, valley, which is big in West Virginia, is being populated by people from around the world that are sensitive to EM signals. Uh, anyhow, the major conference was chaired by a senator from Iowa and Joe Lieberman from Pennsylvania. And they ruled this research is real. People are affected by it, having health consequences. But uh, basically, major companies, utilities, and cell phone companies were probably at fault, part, partly the utilities, because they take the easy way to ground their equipment out. Now, in human medicine, it's not a topic. In dairy cattle that are very sensitive, uh, I've got a couple friends that uh, go out and they diagnose stray voltage, and they're very, very sometimes they're actually natural because you sit on a tetronic plate, but they actually uh, clear up the problem. But uh, there is the agenda. There's a list. That's kind of what I was looking for. Uh, basically, they look at family, family history. Have you a history of disease? Why this is important is the number one detox system in the body for chemicals and in the plants, herbicides, is what's called a P450 cytochrome system. And it allows the body to detox it by breaking it down. If you've got poor mineralization in your history or you've got a lower genetic tolerance to it, uh, you may not be able to detoxify something that your one of your siblings or one of your cousin can. That's very important. Now, uh, Dow Chemical has a dark history, and what it boiled down to is they were using an organophosphate insecticide as a termiticide. So people would come and have their house treated for uh, termites. The vapor would move, and if the kids slept in a downstairs basement, uh, the day after it was treated, some of those kids went into a coma that they were still in 30 years later, and Dow was paying for their care. And that was never revealed, but uh, happy head of a group and the head of research for that company was a, good, was a friend of mine and great guy to work with, and that's why they moved to using fipronil instead of the organophosphate, much safer, and it lasts longer. So what we talk about, what contributes to total body burden, <clears throat> And basically, anytime you're exposed to something that challenges your immune function and detox system, it's all cumulative. Uh, the best uh, 
medical health doctor in the country that I've run across is uh, Jill Carnahan. She's an Illinois farm gal, and she is a survivor of cancer and Crohn's, and also mold exposure when her Boulder, Colorado office was flooded. Anyhow, the way she related it is suppose you've all got your personal detox bucket. It's a five gallon bucket, and some people's buckets are hinged at two inches above the ground. Others are right at the top. And every time you're exposed to something, that bucket gets filled fuller and fuller. When that bucket tips, that's when you get sick. So if you can decontaminate your body or clean out your liver, the main uh, filtration system in the body, then you're going to stay healthy. And uh, you've got different spectrums of viability depending on the mineral levels and then also your diet and your genetics. The number two system is methylation. There's four of these, four minor ones, one major one. Different symptomology all the time. Rashes, sleepiness, irritability, canker sores, look through there. Quite a list. I think I only listed half of them here. More red flags, allergies, infertility, uh, brain fog. Uh, the young fellow I've got with me is a grandson of a good friend of mine that does a lot of egg writing, very good investigator. And anyhow, this kid and his father had a severe problem with brain fog. They started taking the Restore which with the minerals in it, repaired the direct circuitry from the gut to the brain and brain fog cleared up within 20 minutes. I started taking one of their products, it was called uh, H2. And I usually, usually get six hours of sleep and I'm wired and going in at three. But I was taking that and I was going 23 hours a day and I wasn't getting tired and that kind of scared me. Because I know you can't do that too long. <laughs> but it's an H2 product. So, uh, good slide, and this I think came from, uh, it originally had uh, Cindy Crawford in there, who, who was from uh, yeah, DeKalb, Illinois. But it said if a woman is getting out to get dressed up and go out, she's exposing herself to 187 potential toxins. And this is why I was down in Ecuador working on some rose farms and long-term potential is to get them extracting essential oils for the organic cosmetic industry in Europe. That's where the bucks are. Anyhow, a lot of things you're probably sitting there thinking, holy crap, I use them all the time. So I'm like running into potential problems. As far as glyphosate exposure, Anthony Samsell did this study, and the gel caps that most medicines come in are made from collagen, which comes from cattle, tendons and such. They boil them, and they don't give any regard to if there's any glyphosate eaten by those cattle that is in the gel caps. And also, when they make medicines, they use vat fermentation, and the media typically will contain those. So, uh, my wife's name is Carol. She was feeling... Uh, Dial and she's, she's a live wire. Uh, she's retirement age and she worked 42 years in a medical lab. And anyhow, uh, Richard did an over the phone exposure because that's Richard's gift. Go listen to him. And he listened and she was full of fluoride. Four X normal levels with the hair analysis showed. Where did she get it from? At the time, we thought it was from bottled water and from uh, taking. Uh, cholesterol drugs, statins, because they're fluoride based. Anyhow, uh, she went to Arden Anderson, who uh, heads our think tank group, and he's an MD, PhD, Master's in Public Health, Agronomist, Air Force Flight Surgeon. So he's pretty good. And went to his, uh, got an ATTA collation from him in his office, west of Kansas City, and it came back and her body ached, high cholesterol, the muscles felt like on fire. So they did the ET chelation, 24-hour urine catch. They sent it to the lab. 
came back and she was full of lead, gallium, gallodinium, thorium, cesium. And they said, where might these have come from? What was your job? Well, Iowa State University and the DOE lab is their center for rare earth research and they're refining them in the floor right above her. My first question is, did, did they have a separate ventilation system? The answer was no. So she was full of these and why she had the high level of cholesterol is if this was causing inflammation and the body knows that it's <coughs> the liver to go into high gear and produce as much as you can to protect the brain. So she went down and had a full body chelation by the top doctor in the country who's also in the think tank down in Beaumont, down in Kirbyville, Texas. And after nine sessions, they dropped her uh, cholesterol level by over 100 points, got rid of the ache and the pains, and she's ready to go for another 20 years. So anyhow, most people don't know about that. They sit there. Uh, she went to the doctor, and the doctor said she, she couldn't sleep either. And her solution to all the problem is take a sleeping pill. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think more people need to be aware of this and be aware that uh, turn of the century, most hospitals had a chelation office. But what they do, uh, this guy, besides being a medical doctor, it was a physicist. He built his own equipment. But they take the blood out. They run it through a UV uh, light. They uh, subject it to ozone to get more oxygen in there. And they inject the EDTA, which is a universal solvent. But she got rid of the plaque of her blood vessels. Uh, 83 year old uh, friend of mine, uh, he gets a chelation about twice a year. He's got zero plaque in his blood vessels. The only thing he's got wrong with his health, he's got angina because he put his cell phone in his shirt pocket for too many years. So I'm going down there. I, Great health, but I know I like steak. I like uh, French fries sometimes. I fry hash browns. I'm going down there just because I know over the years I've got some plaque probably. So it's there. As far as mold, what do we do? Uh, we're down in Ecuador and along the coast. Everyone's got mold problems. If you're in Hawaii, major problem, even in fancy houses. They pulled the they didn't know where the mold was. They took the wallpaper down. Guess where it was? It was growing on the glue, which is sludge based in the house. In a nice house, you think there's no mold, except in the one place is on the sofa cushions. So uh, continuous problem, serious problem. Again, symptoms associated with it. Many, there's 14 different ones. I think there's two pages, 28. Major mycotoxins in grain. The thing is, if they're coming at you, you don't know they're there because they're tough to detect. And also, say one major one are the T2 toxins. There's 400 of them. Only one has been researched. The other 399 have been researched, but the data is still classified top secret by the U.S. military. <clears throat> and what we're seeing now with more root rots because glyphosate kills off the beneficial bacteria in the soil, the fusarium and aspergillus molds are increasing and showing up in the diet. Uh, this uh, Oxford trained medical pathologist went to the local grocery store and he's kind of the old rebel type but he went and grabbed samples from 20 boxes of kids cereal. None of them tested under the allowable level for mycotoxins. Again, health effects of fungi, read them there. Numerous common symptoms, ones that most people have at some time, maybe all the times. Again, symptoms, metallic taste, quite common sometimes. Uh, supposed, not supposed to reveal this yet, but uh, will. Anyhow, we had the bird flu come through Iowa, supposedly a viral disease. Things were extremely fishy with it, and uh, different producers were told, anybody in my group do not allow feed samples to be taken. 
Anyhow, it ended up in 46 million chickens and turkeys ended up being destroyed, sometimes multi-million dollar losses, and then a major problem with disposing of the carcasses. Anyhow, I was sitting there mentioning to a water research friend of mine, I made the comment, wouldn't it be nice if someone had a machine you could sit down and using either electronic waves or some sort of smell wipe out all the bacteria and fungi that are causing the problem? Well, one of these has been developed. It was tested by the World Health Organization, and he was called to testify in front of the WHO over in Italy three weeks ago. And this device we hope to get on the market looks good. We've got a health and wellness page. We uh, put a website together with the help of the guy that did the website for Steppenwolf and the Grateful Dead. And we put a lot of our own content in there. And we have a health solution store up there for people trying to get the information. And uh, a good example, if you're a teacher or have kids, there was a school in Wisconsin up in Appleton, and it was a school for behavior or disordered kids. And uh, delinquents, kids that didn't go to school, getting bad grades, didn't want to study, truant, what have you. And an outside consultant came in that had a good idea on diet, and he looked at the diet and he said, everything's junk. Let's get rid of the pop, let's get rid of the high fructose corn syrup, let's uh, put better food in there, which ended up being cheaper. And after three months, all the kids were perfect, no behavior problems. It was one of the better performing high schools in the state of Wisconsin and nationally. And anyhow, the officials were told, whatever you do, don't tell anyone else about this thing. But a daughter of a friend of ours happened to know about this. But it's called, you can Google it, Miracle in Wisconsin, some neat stories. But it was proof that uh, all these toxins that are in the grain, mycotoxins, poor diet, does have consequences, shows up in the kids because they're younger and they don't have the big fully functioning immune system. So recommendations then for all these problems, we tell people clean up the food supply, use Restore or this hopefully to get on the market uh, called the Molecule to repair the gut tract tissue and then to get rid of any prions which were more in the food supply and maybe are linked to Alzheimer's because it's a plaque disease. Uh, Anthony Samsell has done a lot of work on it. He concurs with that. But there is clinoptilolite available. I get mine from a micro minerals company out of uh, the Netherlands. I have Don bring it back when he comes to Europe. Uh, nine grams per day. There is a small religious community in Illinois and one of the leaders of the church was in our group and owns a seed company. And we were down there putting on a meeting and all of a sudden, being as an elder in the church, he got word that this lady in his community had miscarried for the third or fourth time in a row. And they had not had a live birth in their community for a year. And uh, we sent some placental tissue down to the vet pathologist that had done the work on the large animals and the placental tissue was full of these crystals. And the next question is, what do we do about it? And some Amish guy came up with a solution before we could figure it out, but they start taking the clean up till the light, and within nine months they're having light bursts in the community again. We've seen the same thing in animals. 0.9 grams per day in with the juice. The same thing if you're, if someone in your family is being treated for a cancerous tumor, the best way to shrink the size of the tube and maybe make it disappear is take this because it chelates out the iron and energy is delivered to the tumor by a charged iron. So if you take it, they say take mineral supplements at the same time. So where is this available in the U.S. or if not? Uh, different health food stores sell it. They jack the price up quite a bit. I get mine for maybe $10 a pound out of micro minerals in the Netherlands. Uh, if you, anyone in your family has aquariums and you can go to the aquarium store and get a filter that pulls the ammonia out of the water, that's called zeolite. It's a volcanic mineral. When they grind it smaller, then it becomes clean up tolerate. Out west, the fertility organic growers will use a product called uh, azolite. Azolite is also uh, uh, zeolite. 
Uh, we work with a couple uh, of our medical doctors and our mental health medical people. Hot one's from Illinois. There's a real good one from out in uh, Mount Shasta, California. They work with us. Uh, as far as the effect of all of these exposures, we don't quite know. Michael K. Skinner was a, a good researcher at Washington State University, and in his uh, multi-year study, he exposed lab animals to five different toxins at levels one one hundredth of what was considered harmful. And the genetic damage was done, and the damage did not show up until the third generation later. Again, they censored him on that. I showed the Restore product, uh, very usable. My friend that developed the other machine has his PhD in biophysics from Oak, uh, Oxford and Tokyo. He developed an under-the-counter system for about $1,500 that will pull the roundup out of drinking water. So if you got a water supply that is coming, stream-fed, you always want to look upstream and ask what crops are being grown and what pesticides are they using. If it's a pesticide with a long residual life, then you should have your urine tested, uh, which can be done by John Fagan at his lab in Fairfield, Iowa. It's called Research Health Lab, and he's got the equipment to test for glyphosate and his primary metabolite, which is called AMPA, amino methylphosphonic acid. But you should have that done. I've had it done, but that was when they're using immunoassay, which was not as accurate as what the Germans could do. So I need to get that done. I've got a kit paid for, just haven't done it. There's the under-the-counter, works very well. He does, he talked to Don Huber, he found out the chelation quotient 